Lord Jesus, we are uh, mindful of your presence and your love for us. God, we have come to worship and to sing to you. And Lord, now we open our hearts and we pray that you will teach us that we will be able to receive and that you will teach us how to be intimate with you and that you will shape us into a more holy and a more human shape. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Morning, gang. My name is Jeremy. I'm an RD here. And they asked me to bring you the word today. And so I was, I was thinking about uh, this idea of intimacy with God. And uh, all throughout my week, I've been asking the Lord, okay, Lord, uh, what do you have to say about intimacy? And I think he told me, Jeremy, no matter what you guys do, your version of intimacy is not enough. That it's something that I have to give. Now, I've been reading a lot of Oprah magazine lately. You guys read Oprah? Don't look at me like that. When you're married, you'll understand. <laughs> Michelle's stack of magazines is far bigger than my stack. And so I end up reading a little bit of Oprah. And in Oprah, it has things like getting good at love, how to find it, risk it, let it go, make it grow. There's a test for like every week, you know, Dr. Oz's test on, you know, 10 ways you can be beautiful. How to be intimate, how to grow in intimacy. We live in a, a world, a culture that has how-tos for everything, right? You have the idiot's guide to the Bible. You have the idiot's guide to your computer. You have the idiot's guide to dating and idiot's guide to relationship. Maybe I need that one. It, maybe I need the idiot's guide to marriage. Is my wife in here? No. Okay. I'm safe. But, but this idea of intimacy, we bring to the table all of our brokenness. We bring to the table um, an attempt to get at something that God uh, has for us and wants to give to us. And so I was thinking about all these how-tos, and I realized that none of them would work. But what would work is a story. And before we get to that story... I want to give you guys a little picture of what all of our attempts at intimacy look like. Travis, I am so excited. We finally get to spend time this week together because you've been really busy and I've been really busy. And, you know, I don't know, let's sit down, you know, let's just talk. I just, you know, I know that usually when we spend time together, it's a lot of, like, us being busy and not getting to spend time together. And then when we do spend time together, it's like, me being like, oh, can you help me with this or something? And so today, I just want to like get to know you better and like know your heart. All right, so. Well, but what I really mean is for you to just tell me like how we can get closer. Like, how can I get in there? Just tell me and like I'll do it. And just tell me what your heart is. Cause like I, I want, you know, I just want that. I want that closeness. My heart's really good. But really, you're amazing. You're incredible. And I just want to, I want to tell you that you're amazing and wonderful and so wonderful and handsome in every way. And so just tell me, you know, what, what can we do to get closer? And tell me what you think about our relationship and all of that. Just go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. I'm here. I've really been thinking. And I, I will always love you. ever had that conversation <laughs> or one like it like a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend come on anyone it, Tim <laughs> no one raising their hands come on I know I live right outside the DTR bench <laughs> I hear them all the time oh all you juniors are laughing but two years ago you were at that DTR bench <laughs> how many of you have ever experienced maybe your relationship with God in terms like that that you were asking and asking to know him. Uh, you're asking and asking him for, for him to speak to you, for him to fill you up. 
And then before a minute goes by for him to answer, we're jumping into the next song, or we're jumping into the next, um, the, the next prayer request, or the next praise. When I was asked to speak on prayer and intimacy, I realized that um, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat as everyone else. I, half, half of my prayer life looks like that. I forget to pause. But sometimes we're on the other end, too, that we feel like we can't even approach God because we're you know, so burdened and so heavy, and we've done this or done that. But I want to tell you today, we were created for intimacy. We were created in such a way that God wants to walk with us and speak to us and hear from us. In, in Genesis, you see Adam, he walks in the garden with God every day. And then we have the fall, right? And we've all heard this, right? The fall screwed everything up. Guys, I don't know about you and your family life. I don't have to go all the way back to the fall to figure out where I went wrong with intimacy. Right? I mean, in my home, I loved my parents. They were great. But we never talked about what it meant to be intimate. We never talked about what real relationship looks like. In fact, we might not even know what intimacy means. So I'm going to give us a definition. I love words. My wife reminds me that I'm a dork pretty much every day because I love old languages. The word intimate actually comes from Latin, and this is what it means. Marked by close acquaintance, association, or familiarity, relating to or indicative of one's deepest nature, intimate prayer. Essential, innermost, the intimate structure of something. Marked by informality and privacy. Very personal, private or involved relationship sexually, a close friend or confidant. Those are all the things that the word intimate means. Those are all the things that God designed us for. It's interesting because in our intimacy, in our ability to be connected with one another and with God, we are most like Him. It makes sense that the place where we're most like God would be the place that gets messed up first, would be the place that the enemy attacks us, would be the place that we ourselves attack us and twist us and change that. But there's good news. Now, I, I poured through all these texts about prayer, thinking about like prayer is intimacy, prayer is intimacy. We heard Bill yesterday say, you will never know yourself as well as you know yourself in prayer. And I came to a text that seemingly has absolutely nothing to do with intimacy, with prayer, but it has everything to do with dinner. And it's in the Gospel of Luke. If you guys have your Bibles, would you turn to Luke chapter 19 with me? They have pew Bibles here, right? So if you don't have a Bible, grab one out of the pew. Chapter 19, verse 1. Wait to hear the pages stop. The beautiful silence. Okay. Jesus entered Jericho, made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region. He had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. I kind of vibe with Zacchaeus on that one. If you ever walk around, I'm shorter than everyone. <laughs> so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree beside the road that, where Jesus was going to pass by. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus, called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quickly come down. I must 